Attention all sim racers! Assetto Corsa Competizione's setup presets are setting you up to fail. I mean, at least if you're still making one of those five mistakes in your ACC settings. And with that, welcome back to Overtake.gg and today we have another look at one of my favorites, Assetto Corsa Competizione. Because now and then I see sim racers not knowing about 5 easy setup fixes that if not taken into account will seriously hurt your lap times. So before we jump in, if you learned something new today, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Overtake and ring the bell for mobile notifications so you never miss any of our new uploads. But let's start with mistake number one, force feedback clipping. The force feedback in ACC is a point of controversy for many sim racers out there. Some love it, others just can't stand it. On the other hand, the fact is that it's pretty accurate to what actual race drivers feel in their steering wheel. Whether those forces make up for a good FFB without the help of gravitational forces also being transmitted is where opinions differ. However, it is important to understand that every bit of information about the condition of the car on the track is critical in order to be able to fire out consistent fast lap times in the long term. And the last thing anyone needs then is FFB clipping. The state where your wheelbase is putting out so much force that details get lost. Ever noticed that little bar over there? <laughs> no? That's mistake number one for you. You should set up your in-game FFB gain to be as high as possible without this bar ever staying red for longer than a split second. To have some eventual clipping is fine, just make sure the graph isn't staying red for too long as this will cost you massive time and especially consistency. Mistake number two, choosing the wrong brakes. Yeah, having a look into the setup menu can make you dizzy as a complete beginner. So many options, so little information regarding what you actually should change. And usual, the answer everybody has here is use the aggressive preset. And that's a fantastic starting point and you should be using that. But what if I tell you that the aggressive preset is actually setting you up to fail? Don't get me wrong. The preset is a good starting point, yes. But sadly, many settings in there need changing for you to be even remotely competitive. First one. The brakes. In ACC you can choose four different brake disc setups and oh boy do they differ from one to the other. Let's see how many massive differences are labeled in the game. One, two, three and four. That's all we get. The default when loading an aggressive preset is two. So is that the best one to race with? Not really. Because I would assume that most of our daily races we do in ACC are actually sprint formats. Races that are not longer than 30 minutes tops. You see, the brake disc number 2 is actually designed for endurance racing. The pads are designed to hold roughly 12 hours and can even stretch to 20 hours if you take good care of them. The downside, they don't have the same bite and performance as the number 1 pads which are designed for sprint racing. So if you're trying to set a fastest lap time in training or a quali session, set the pads to 1, 90 to 120 minutes of lifespan before they rapidly lose their potency is more than enough and will give you the extra edge on the brakes to beat your rival in the deciding moment of the race. Before we move on to mistake number 3 that is even more agonizing, as it turns off your engine's juice, for the sake of completeness, brake pad number 3 is best for racing in the rain and brake pad 4 is more of a dummy brake for testing that will lose performance rapidly after one or two laps. So keep your hands off that. But now, mistake number 3, the engine mapping. Sadly, it doesn't stop with the brakes. In the default aggressive preset, the wrong engine mapping is also selected. Just like with the brake pads, the default setup is equipped with the right setting for endurance racing. A mapping with a normal fuel consumption with an aggressive throttle map. But again, most ACC races are short ones or you are doing some training laps on your own. Select one to get the most power out of your engine as fuel consumption 
is not really an issue in a short format race. Just imagine you playing this game for years without knowing this. Racing with a handicap like that. You literally had less horsepower than all the others. This is super essential. If you want to learn more about engine mappings and what the different stages mean, let me know in the comments down below and maybe we do a full fledged out tutorial on it. What do you guys reckon? But let's move on to mistake number four, not bothering with tire pressure. Setting up the car and finding the right balance is tricky and takes time to perfect. Setting up your tires on the other hand is a chore and it needs to be done in order to be quick on track. Some would even say ACC is a tire pressure simulator with some racing on the side. This goes as far as meaning that your tires will lose a ton of performance when driving .5 PSI outside of the perfect operating window. So quick guide. Do 3 laps on track to see where the preset pressures are at. When you head back to the setup menu, you can find the hot pressures here and then try to adjust them so that every tire on the car performs at 27.7 PSI. But the most important thing is save the setup afterwards with the ambient temperature in the file name. By doing so, you are giving yourself a chance of adjusting the pressures easily when the temps in the air and track change. Do you know how often the temperatures are different between the quali and the race session? It's ridiculous. But saving your setup together with the tire temps you were adjusting it to, you will now gain a head start in figuring out the new values. The rule of thumb is one click for every degree Celsius of temperature change. But just be careful not to overdo it. It's roughly one click per degree. Not exactly. It's actually more like dot nine. So adjust it to the rule of thumb. But if you had to adjust it a ton, maybe go one or two clicks back. Mistake number five. Not knowing about the easiest setup trick in ACC. My last tip is super essential. Yes, setups are difficult and learning them by heart will take time and practice and maybe you don't even want to do it. But for starters, there's one setup change that will transform the car's behavior on track massively like no other. The ride height. Changing this setting can easily get rid of the super annoying understeer most aggressive presets have, can help with curbs in mid-engine cars and can also correct oversteer behavior. To start with, you should always have the front of the car pretty low to the ground. Keep it at the lowest setting if you are facing a track without a lot of high curbing. Just one click here can transform the car's behavior over curbs, like on Imola for example, and can save you from spinning out. Never go more than two clicks. And at the rear of your car, go wild. If you raise the right height at the rear, you can get rid of some nasty understeer most cars have with the default setup. The rear is now higher up in the air, resulting in it having less downforce, which shifts the weight of the car further to the front, resulting in more grip. Just be careful you don't overdo it, as this will lead to a loser rear and increased oversteer in the process. If you now also experiment with the rear arrow, which is the bar right next to it, you can achieve extraordinary results without having much of a clue about the rest of the setup. And of course, I'm not saying the rest should be neglected, but I think too few drivers take advantage of ACC being so heavily focused on right height and the overall aero package. But if you don't want to take my word for it, why not listen to Charlie? He knows what he's doing in ACC, right? So maybe also check out his setup guide he did a few months back. But that's it from me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time around. Cheers.